Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. So, hey, got, you guys. And, uh, yeah. Well, we've got a couple of Irish whiskeys, but they're sourced. Yes. Just don't know where from. Um, and they're from a new distillery in, called Bowen Distillery. So, sourced from another Irish whiskey. Yeah, yeah, distillery. yeah. So, it's Bowen Distillery, which is up north of Dublin, like just halfway to Northern Ireland. Okay. And uh, Drahuda is where it's, Drahuda is the town where they're at. Yes. But this is from Chat Up Church of Magnificent Bastard. Chat Up Church of Magnificent Bastard. Heart. Now, he sent us, and we have like eight variations of this whiskey. So we're going to do a standalone episode on this one and another one tomorrow. Okay. Because I've been to like four different stores and I've seen these in all of those stores. Uh -huh. So these have pretty wide distribution now. So you mean variations as in like finishing casts? Yeah, like okay. uh, some port, but those I haven't seen. But this one and the one that we're going to do tomorrow, I've seen everywhere. Okay. So I think they're pretty accessible. So they got disinterest, at least here in Austin, Texas. Yeah. So this is a 10 year old Irish whiskey. It's a single malt. Yeah. Right? It's forty six percent. Ooh, there is that musty butter and uh, you apple. Know what? It's not a mile high proof, but it's a very very present nose. Right? Yeah. Kind of almost vibrant. Yeah. Like a very citrus forward. It started in bourbon cask, then finished in sherry cask. Oloroso. It's it's all over the place, man. There's citrus. There's like um, there's rose petals. There's almond pound cake. Yeah, man, this is a tremendous amount of different layers of sweetness in this nose. And it's uh, 46. 10 year old single malt. I wish we knew where it was from. Yeah, me too. So they started again, like in the, you know, the teens, the 2000 teens. Mm -hmm. um, and they're actually doing like local barley, local grain, local everything. Yeah. But this is what they've been releasing while their stuff is aging. Well, so as of recently as 2017, so four years ago, right. they were like starting to make their own stuff. It's a revival of a distillery that goes back hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So but, in the meantime, just so you can get some money coming in the door and bottles yeah. going out, if it lives up to the nose, I will be pleased. You know what this reminds it's me of really though? It's a really nice nose. This almost, from the sherry is so strong on this, it almost reminds me of how the sherry dominates the McAllen nose. Oh, uh, you know what? You see what I mean? That is, uh, okay, yeah, I agree. But I'm I'm hoping it doesn't do what McAllen does, which is this vibrant, beautiful, haunting and then, nose and, then and then a palate flat. like Meh. It smells really good. Ooh, I'm... No, it, oh, no. Wow, yeah. It's got presence. Yeah. Even pepper. Wow. A little bit of almost sulfur. It's like oh, a, there's the sherry, aftertaste. Jammy, so jammy. It's like jammy with the sweetness. It is so jam like fr forward. fruit preserves and jam. Wow. And, well, huh. Yeah. That's a. Can I say that I was not expecting much because I thought this is sort of like a somebody yeah. jumping on the Irish bandwagon. Sure. But pleasantly surprised. Damn. Pleasantly surprised. Uh, also, the intensity and the richness and the robust yeah. flavors. I would have guessed fifty plus on that proof. Easy. The fact that this is 46% and it has that much that much density and that many layers. Well, it's kind of mm. hard to pick out. It's like a cacophony of sweet, rich flavors. Everything from floral to fruity to different types of pastries. There is this like pepper zinginess that goes right from the very beginning all the way through the mid palate, all the way out the finish, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't dominate ever, but it's always there. Yeah. This peppery, it's just always there. Mm. <sighs> It, you know what, this, I'm, I'm gonna say this, and it sounds like I'm saying it in a bad way, I'm not. I would not have guessed 10 years. No, no, I would guess younger. Yes. Because it's kind of youthful. Lively, it's very yeah. lively, and it's that, that liveliness, and I think the thing that you were specifically talking about, um, that, that zing that goes from beginning to end, mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing that as a whiskey gets older and more aged, rounded off, matured, yeah, those those edges get uh, worn off a little bit. I'm gonna do but a this little is bit of water. Hanging on from- you want some? Yeah, a little bit, from beginning to end. Oily too, man. Those I'm flavors- Very they oily. They cling. Um, wow, it's almost like a syrup clinginess. It's still with me very intensely. I'm gonna keep my phone on hmm? because we're expecting a truck to come pick up pallets. Okay. It still hadn't arrived yet. No. So. It's kind of like the cable guy. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, there would be there, be there between eight and nine p.m. and eight tomorrow. Nine a.m. and ten p.m. and yeah. Yeah, sometime before your kid starts high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the water brought out a little bit more bitterness and tamped down the sugar. That usually I have the reverse happen. Yeah. But this one, the sweet jammy notes kind of subsided a little. Even the subsided. Went high. Even subsided. There's a lot there, but it oh, did yeah. it did squeeze that compress that a little bit, and it did, did leave what's kind of feeling like the the barrel, a little bit of a tannic, tanniny yeah. bit. I think it's got to be the real sulfuric kind of edged sherry cask. Damn, that's remarkable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like yeah. That. If you like just big flavors, big jammy fruit Irish. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and. You said there's a lot of different variations. This one, what did they do other than it's just like this a, is just a ten year old. So this all. is just a ten year old. They yeah. haven't done any kind of weird cask anything. Tomorrow we get to try a cask strength seven. Oh well, this is a forty six, uh -huh. and we're doing a cask younger. Yeah, wow. cask strength. Wow. What? Okay. Uh, boring music. Sometimes I just want to throw away my doctorate and just become a spirit taster. How come so many people get so lucky? Dream job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Don't if only give up your if only this was the entirety of our job. <laughs> oh yes, can you imagine? That would be amazing. Like show up and work for like forty five minutes, two days a week. Yeah, <laughs> and then go home, do whatever we want. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I'm gonna start crying thinking about the where did, idea where did of that. we go wrong? I don't know. You know what though? What if we were okay with very meager lifestyles? Yeah. And we weren't on a non profit channel. Very meager. And we weren't on a non profit channel. Yeah. Uh, we could do just the YouTube channels and live like cheaper than a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. And we wouldn't have to like build anything, maintain anything. No, we'd have to go back to, you'd have to teach me how to edit because we'd both be editing because we couldn't afford editors. Sorry, Dan, you're out of a job. Yeah, you're going to have to teach me how to do the bulk editing And shit. as soon as Dan stops editing, he's like, what is this shit? Yeah. I'm not going to, this is unwatchable. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Uh, game and shame. My brother-in-law drives two hours to get a bottle bottle of proper twelve every time we watch UFC. Two I, hours. Wow! Well, I told him I didn't consider this drinkable whiskey. Made him try Jameson uh, Stout uh, edition, which is a little more expensive, and he thinks proper twelve was better. The brand, the power of the brand, is insane. Do you right? Say, yeah. In those situations, like, look, man, let people drink what they want. Yeah. Uh, if they like proper tool, great. More power I would be to trying them. to stop the guy just for the two hour drive though. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I would start it. I'd be like, dude, you don't have to do that. What I have found but is very effective mm -hmm. uh, is if you have like a, a lineup of, let's say five, six whiskeys of the same category and their favorite is in there mm -hmm. and you give it to them blind. Yep. Yeah, and that's freaked me out. Yeah. You know what I ranked really high one time in the you, blind tasting? You want him to choose something different. Get half a dozen Irish whiskeys, pour them blind, yeah. and have him choose his favorite. And, First yeah. class I ever hung out with Zach. Yeah. When, as he, he was a student. Mm -hmm. And he was like, let's do a blind Talking tasting. Zach is the vice, vice chancellor, chancellor of the academy. Of the academy. Yeah. He, he said, let's do a blind tasting down at Engelbrecht the night before class. I was like, sure, it's all bourbons. Or it's all bourbon category type stuff. It's not bourbon necessarily, but it's all American. Yeah. And I picked this one, like, hands down, this is the best, period. Yeah. Nothing else came close. It was mellow corn. Really? Yeah. Wow. Never would have guessed wow. in a million years. <laughs> it was all budget line stuff. Yeah. I So usually whenever we're talking about um, a whiskey on the rocks, mm -hmm. you and I both think, like, yeah, we think in a lot of ways bourbon is probably the, the best go-to right. for an on the rocks whiskey. Because, you know, it has just that, the new oak barrel gives it a lot of intensity of flavors. It stands up to the ice. I think this could stand up to ice. You know, no I, problem. I, you know what that's coming through the nose now for me? Mm. Uh, um, uh, maple syrup. Yes. It's maple syrup. Isn't that weird? Yeah. After it sat there for a while. Wow. And not like super expensive fancy shit, but yeah. like maple syrup and, you know, just grocery store maple syrup. Man, I just... God, I wish we knew who was making that. It's actually a mix of maple syrup and corn syrup, like halfway between a fancy maple right. and an Aunt Jemima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, this is what they're sourcing. Mm -hmm. One, Good they choice. well done choosing what you want to be uh, bottling and releasing. Yeah, I wish we knew because that's always nice to know what you're sourcing. Ireland's um, particularly and bad about that. Yeah, yeah, but but they kind of set the bar. Pretty high. Pretty high for their own stuff. Yeah. We That's should've... something to consider. Maybe we shouldn't have started with the 10. <laughs> right. They set the bar. So they're going to start releasing their own stuff. Like, wait, what happened to... Yeah. yeah Woodsworth's <laughs> really gone downhill recently. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your livers. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us.